Hello students, my name is Mr. Ishengoma. Today we are going to look at sequence and to be specific, we are going to be finding the any term formula. However, before we begin, I would request you to subscribe to my channel so that you are always the first person to receive all my new videos together with passing through the old videos. All right. Basically, we are going to be looking at the linear sequence. We are going to look at the quadratic sequence and we shall look at the exponential sequence. And all these three sequences, our main target is how do we find the nth term formula for each type of sequence. Now, to begin with, we are looking at the linear sequence. As we know very well, when we are talking about a linear sequence, we, we are talking about a linear equation. A linear equation normally uh, has an unknown, which is not a power. Remember, normally this and this is a number, and then the x is not a, having a power. But now in sequence, we use N. N stands for any position. N stands for any position. So this means in this case, we shall be having sequence whereby N does not have a power. In order for us to notice whether the sequence is linear, we shall have to look at uh, either the common addition or the common subtraction. Once a sequence has got a common addition or common subtraction, that means this sequence will be a linear sequence. Let's see the first example here. From seven, from seven to 10, we shall always be adding three. From 10 to 13, we shall be adding three. From 13 to 16, we shall be having three. So if you look properly at this sequence, you will notice that what we are doing is adding three all the time. So when you are adding the same thing or when you are subtracting the same thing, this is under the linear sequence. Now, we have a summary of finding the formula. Once you have discovered this is a linear sequence, then take your common difference. Take your common difference, 3n. Plus, when you take that 3n, you plus. What do you plus? You plus your first term minus your common difference. You take 7 minus 3. You take 7 minus 3. So 7 minus 3 gives us 4. So our answer will be 3n plus 4. You can prove this. You can put here any term. For instance, if I have 3 on the place of n, I keep 3 and then plus 4. 3 times 3 is 9. When I add 4, I get 13. So you realize that because I kept 3, and remember I said n is for any term, meaning n here will be standing for the third position. And if you check properly, our third position is 13. And we have proved it and we have got 13. Means our formula is a correct formula for finding any term. Let's check the next sequence. From 16, we add 2. From 18 to 20, we add 2. We add 2. Now, because we add 2 all the time, our answer will basically be to n. But remember, we have to add something. All the time we add the answer after subtracting the first term with our common difference. 16 minus two, that is 14. So plus 14. We go to the next one. From 38 to 36, we subtract two. From 36 to 34, we subtract two. From 34 to 32, we subtract two. It means 
two n is our starting point, then 38 minus negative two. 38 minus negative two. This means our answer now formula will be two n plus 40 because minus and minus become positive. That means 38 plus two. We look at the next example. From 60 to 70, add 10. 70 to 80, add 10. 80 to 90, add 10. So that means 10n. 10n plus what? 60 minus 10. Where did I get 60? First term. Minus common difference. Finally, our answer will be 10n plus 50. Next example. From negative six to negative seven, I get negative one addition. Negative seven to negative eight is another negative one. Negative eight to negative nine is another negative one. Hence, I will call it negative one and plus. Negative six minus negative one. Negative six minus negative one. This means my answer now will be negative one n minus five because this is positive so minus six plus one i get minus minus five from negative 10 to negative eight means i add two because negative 10 plus two i go to negative eight negative eight plus two i go to negative six negative six plus two i go to negative four this means i have positive two n but what do i add negative 10 minus two so i will add negative 10 minus two. This gives me my final answer as 2n minus 12, because negative 10 and negative two, I get negative 12. This is how we quickly find the nth term formula for any linear, linear sequence. Now let's look at the quadratic sequence. Quadratic sequence. Now, quadratic sequences, I'm dividing them into two groups. One, group A. Group A, I will look at square numbers. I will look at square numbers. For square numbers, which are following each other, however, the starting term might be different, is a bit easier. How do you check? First of all, you look at the terms. We know square numbers. So once you see 1, 4, 9, 16, this is a square number, right? But before I go to do, we need to understand quadratic sequence. Quadratic takes us to a n square plus b n plus c, because this is a a terminology. This is a what we call a quadratic statement or a quadratic expression, whereby we have our unknown with the power two. Remember, A, B, C are supposed to be values. In other words, numbers. N stands for the unknown. So N square is quadratic statement. Now, for us to have a sequence that will lead us to a quadratic statement, it must have the second difference same. What do I mean? Let's look at the first difference. From one to four, I add three. From four to nine, I add five. From nine to 16, I add seven. When you look at these sequences, you realize they don't have common. But when you do again, you see from three to five is added two, from five to seven is added two. So when the first difference is when the first difference is different, it's not the same. Do again. Once you get the second difference being same, then this tells you that this is a quadratic sequence. Now, after knowing it's a quadratic sequence, then we can do the approach of quadratic statement. But once 
it is square numbers. Once it is square numbers, this is what we do. We look at the first term. Once you confirm the all square numbers, look at the first term. What do you square to get the first term? For this case, my first term is one. When I square what to get the first term? But remember, for every first term, the value of n is one. So if I have to square one to get one, and I know one stands for n, I just keep n here, and that is my answer. To get a clear example, let's look at number two. If you confirm they're all square numbers, then look at the first one. What do I square here to get 25? I would realize I square five. Now, put your bracket square. Since we said this is the first term, and first term is the one, and one is represented by n, this means it is the same as saying one plus four square. But instead of writing one, I say n plus four square. Let's look at the third example. What do I square to get 81? I need to square nine. Okay, if I need to square nine, since I need n, this is the first term, it means n plus eight. Why? Because if I keep here one plus eight, it goes back to nine. Hence, my answer is n plus eight square. Number four, once the, all of them are square numbers, we look at the first one, nine. Nine means three square. So three square is the same as one plus two square. And one will stand for n, n plus two square. So I keep n plus two square. Let's look at the last example for this. Square numbers, this is 49. 49 is seven square. If I expand it, I will say one plus six square. Why? Because one plus six, I got seven. And if I remove one, since it's the first term, I replace it with n. So that means n plus six square. And we can prove this. For example, this is the first term. This is the second term, third term, fourth term. So if this is the fourth term, means n is equal to four. So if you keep here four, you will get four plus six square. This is 10 square and we know 10 square is a hundred. So this is how you easily find the nth term formula for square number sequencing. But on the same position, I have B. B, when you look at them, they are supposed to be quadratic, but they are not square numbers. Why are they quadratic? Let's check. One plus two, I got three. Three plus four, I got seven. Seven plus six, I got two, 13. When you look at this difference, it's on the same. So we do again. Plus two, I get four. Plus two. So once I do the second time and I can get the common difference, then we conclude that this is quadratic. And we said for quadratic, the formula is a n squared plus b n is equal to c and a plus c. We said a, b, and c are numbers. So we need to find these numbers and we substitute them here and we get the formula. Now, being that they are not square numbers, so we cannot do the shortcut which we did for square numbers. We need to use the whole quadratic formula. For the, to get first term one, means I have to keep here one, one. So I will get a, one a plus one b plus c, that is one c is equal to one. To get three means n is two. I keep two here, I get four a plus, I keep two here, I get two b, one c is equal to three. To get the third term, which is seven, I keep three here and three there. I get nine a plus three b, plus one C is equal to seven. I get three simultaneous equations. I have to go to my calculator and I get the solutions for the three equations. <laughs> so go to, yeah. So
So I go to my calculator there. I go to equations. I click one. I go to unknown three here. I know three, three unknowns there. So when I got three unknowns, I start. A1 is one. A1 is one. I click one. A, B1 is one. C1 is one. Then D1 will be one. Then I go to A2 is four. I keep four. B2 is two. I keep two. C2 is one. I keep one. D is three. I keep three. A3 is nine. Here, A3 is nine. I keep nine. B3 is three. I keep three. And C is one. I keep one. Then D will become seven. X is one means my A is one. I click again equal sign. Uh, B is negative one. I click again equal sign and this is one. So I have got the value of A, B, C. Substitute them there. I get one N square minus one N plus one. So this becomes my nth term formula for quadratic sequencing. I can do this again in another sequence here. So first I check. Once I check and I realize that the second one is common difference, then I straight away use the formula. The first term is 10. The second term is 14. The third term is 22. So I go back to my calculator and I find the value of A, B, and C. Then after finding the value of A, B, and C, I get my answer. A is one, D will be 10, A two, D will be 14. Then I go to A three and then the D will be 22. So my first answer will be two, then my Y will be negative two, and this will be 10. So I substitute in my formula again. I keep two there, so I get two n square. I keep minus two n, and I keep plus 10. And finally, I check this. Here I get plus one, plus two, plus three, then again, it will be plus one. So straight away, I go to the formula. Sorry, it is 17. Then four a plus two b, plus C will be the second term 18, and 9A plus 3B plus C will be uh, 20. So after writing my equation, I go straight to the calculator and I find the values. So for this case here, the first term is 17, the second term is 18, and the third term is 20. So I start one, two, three, D1 is 17, uh -huh. D2 is 18, I go to D3, D3 is 20. So my first answer will be 0 0.5. My second answer will be negative 0 0.5. And my third answer will be 17. So again, I substitute these answers to A n squared plus B n plus C because that's a quadratic statement. So A, I keep 0 0.5 n squared minus 0 0.5 n and plus 7, 17. So that is how we use the general quadratic formula to find the nth term formula. Remember, whenever I use the first term, second term, and third term, this part will never change always. It will always be A plus B plus C. It will always be 4A plus 2B plus C. It will always be 9A plus 3B plus C. Why? Because this is a summary for the first term second term and third term. You will be only changing the terms, right? This will remain the same here and there, but here the first term, second term, third term is different from here. So this is how we do the quadratic sequences. We, look at, we looked at the quadratic sequence, which are like square numbers. Then part B, we looked at quadratic sequences, which are uh, different from square numbers, but, how do we know if it's quadratic? We look at the second common difference. 
first common difference that is linear, but second common difference that is called quadratic. Now let's look at the last part. The last part is exponential sequence. For exponential sequence, it gives us a common ratio. Common ratio is what we multiply from the first term to get the second term. For instance, from one to two, we multiply two. From two to four, we multiply two. From four to eight, we multiply two. You can check even here. From one to five, we multiply five. From five to 25, we multiply five. And from 25 to 125, we multiply five. So this is what we call the common, common ratio. Now, when we have our common ratio, we can have a summary of the formula, and that is, we take the first term, we multiply by our common ratio, power n minus one. First term, multiply by common ratio, power n minus one. For example, first term is one, common ratio is two, n minus one. That's the answer, but we can prove it. If I want, let's say, this is the first term, second term, third term. Let's find the third term. If I keep n3, because for the third term, n is 3. If I keep 3 here, 3 minus 1, I get 2. So it means it will be 2 power 2. 2 power 2, I get 4. 4 times 1 is 4. And then our third term is 4. But remember, 1 times any number is that number. So I will summarize this sequence as this. Remember, I've used this summary statement. Right. Let's look at the second one again. 1 times 5, 1 times 5, but remember 5 is the common ratio, so n minus 1. And I will summarize it as 5 n minus 1. But when you look at number 3, we multiply by 3 now. So if we multiply by 3, again we shall take 9 times 3 n minus 1. Okay, we can even prove this for the second term. Second term is 27. If I keep two here, two minus one, I get one. Three per one is three. Three times nine, it takes me to 27. If I test for the third term, third term is N three. So if I keep here three, three minus one is two. Three power two is nine. Nine times nine is 81. So we conclude that this is our final answer. Nine times three N minus one. So that's the exponential sequence. For any term to be exponential, it means the n must be part of the power. So even here, times two, times two, times two. So that means seven, first term, if you remember, I wrote there up, first term times CR. So times two, and then n minus one. So that is how we solve exponential sequence. We have another method of writing as a product of square numbers. Like here, I write 3 power 1, 3 power 2, 3 power 3, and 3 power 4. Then after you check the powers, so this will be 3 power n, because the power has common, common term. But if I don't want to use this and I use the formula, it would be 3 times 3 n minus 1. This answer and this answer are same. We shall prove that in future. The same here. If I change these two powers, this one will be um, two times three. This one will be two times three square. This one will be two times three power three. And this will be two power three times four. I have written them as product of their square number. So answer will be two is not changing, keep two times three starts with power one, so three power n. This is using a uh, product of their square numbers. But if I wanted to use the formula, I would take first term times, pro, uh, common ratio is three, three, three. So times three to the power n minus one. This is using the formula. This is using the uh, writing as a product of its common term. 
This is how we find the nth term formulas for sequences that are linear, that are quadratic, and those exponential. Thank you for being a good audience. Keep watching the videos. I'll keep giving you better videos. Thank you. My name is Mr. Ishengoma.